Okay, Christelle, in your YouTube lessons, your passion for the instrument comes across. I can see that you really feel the music. Where does that come from? Music is important. Uh, music is a language. And uh, I have very often found that whether you are speaking your own mother language or you are speaking another language, like right now, uh, words betray you. Uh, when you want to convey some complicated feelings, you can spend books after books writing about this feeling like Shakespeare or this kind of thing, but you need this amount of time to, to transmit and to translate what you've got in your heart and in your head. The thing is, with the music, it's almost instantaneous. If you are a genius, it's straight away. You find the right note that will be evocative, that will just say to, say to, to someone, this is where I am coming from. So, in order to, to transmit to someone else this, uh, this ability, this power, um, teaching to someone is the best way to, <laughs> to make the things possible for someone else to experience this mm -hmm. particular power, to say with few notes, okay, I am sad, with few notes, oh, I am hyper happy. You see, this mm. is so important to, uh, to give the tools to someone to express that, basically. This is, this is the, the main goal of my YouTube business. Sure. And when you're playing, so say you're playing Georgia on my mind mm -hmm. or whatever, what's going on in, in, in your mind? Are you, do, do you visualize anything or do you see the music in any way or is it all just the sound? In fact, I'm trying to find a middle way between being a good girl, which means, oh, okay, I am doing the notes, I am paying attention to my bands, mm -hmm. um, I am just letting the music going on, letting the time passing, and trying to, to try my best, basically. At the same time, I am not very far from um, thinking of something, thinking of someone, thinking of a past relationship, thinking of my childhood, thinking of a moment in my life that is exactly what I am thinking. Or it can be the exact moment where I am mm. playing the music that is uh, evocative of, of a special feeling. And then mm. uh, I, am, I am trying all my best to still be this good, good student, good girl, play, playing the bands correctly. But at the same time, I'm trying to, to play what I've got in my mind. And, mm. and then the tools that I've mm. got, which means the natural note, the bands, the sense of the phrase, the sense of harmony, uh, the overblows, <laughs> <laughs> all those things. Uh, um, uh, uh, it's just like a, a painter uh, choosing the color mm. that he wants to mm. uh, to use. Um, but yes, it's a it's a combination really of um, being careful of the craftsmanship plus trying to say something and to say something interesting, musical, you just need to, uh, to recall feelings. Mm. It's impossible to, to only play the, the notes for the notes. Yeah. Does it make sense? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I know what you mean. Think something has to be attached to it. It's, exactly. Music is a wonderful, wonderful thing in and of itself, but it's nothing without humanity. Oh, you yeah. know, we're humans. We're, we're connected to people and to our, to our emotions. So something has to be in it. And I was just interested because different people seem to see and feel different things as they're playing. Did you see Lee Sankey's study of brain instruments, he called it? Have you seen yes, that? Yes, yes. Yeah, that was kind of quirky, but it, 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 it got me thinking about, you know, the different way people kind of see things. Um, yeah, I, I mean, we are, we are all different and, and consider this. Um, the harmonica is, the dietary harmonica is mm. probably the most sim simple instrument mm that you can find these days, but beside the didgeridoo and this kind of thing, but you know, it's, the conception is very, very simple. And mm. when you come across um, people who have been working, mm. uh, truly working on this instrument mm. for quite a while, they come up with a completely different way of, uh, of playing the music, mm. of um, having their own sounds, yeah. you know, uh, their own things. and. Mm. It just shows that, yeah, the, the brain mm. and the anchoring, the, the feeling of mm. um, uh, that you can express is very much different from one player to another. Yeah, sure. So can you give us an example of an overblow? 
Okay, uh, on the hole number four, for example? Yeah, hole, hole four. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, basically, uh, an overblow or an overbends, because there is overbends, this is the family of the overblows and overdraws. So, yeah, most likely, you will come across um, the overblow on the hole number four, five, six, which are the ones that are more useful and more accessible. There is the overblow on the hole number one, and then after that, the overdraws on the other mm -hmm. holes. Uh, the thing is, uh, in order to, to do another blow, you need to master first the natural bends. Mm. So if you, if you take the whole number four, for example, so be careful. Already, you need to be really in pitch uh, with the, regarding your draw bend because it's very easy to, uh, to go the old way and become too flat. It's too flat, so it's... And then instead, mm -hmm. instead of uh, uh, changing the position of your tongue when you bend, you just keep it that way and then you are giving it a push when you blow. Mm -hmm. So basically the, the, the reed mm -hmm. keeps the shape, mm -hmm. uh, the reed keeps the shape of, uh, of your uh, draw bend and then you are just acting to, to get the overblow. You have to know something, the overblow, have, the overblow has always the tendency to be a tiny bit too flat. So you, you need to compensate uh, um, with regular practice in order to, mm. to, to, to be in pitch, basically. Mm. You see, uh, on, the, on, the, on the whole number six, you can actually modify the pitch uh, on uh, a harmonica that is not mine. This is the one <laughs> of, yeah. of, 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 of Liam. So, so basically, You can, I think you, you can hear the, the change of pitch mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So basically, yeah, when you get an overblow, you can be happy <laughs> and you should. But the thing is, in order to, to be accurate, you, are, you need to still work on, on the pitch of the overblow. This is very important. Mm. And your uh, intonation, your, your pitching, it seems very good. With the bends, you seem to be able to hear when you're going too far. Is that something you've worked on hearing or that just happens? Uh, you, you can tell when it's in tune. Okay, uh, I have been a musician since forever. I have been playing recorder uh, when I was three years old and I've been doing that for my basically my whole life. But the, the thing is, after a while, you, you just like when you're talking with someone, you, you understand if this person is in pain or if this person is happy and stuff. So basically all those intonations in, in the voice of mm -hmm. someone become exactly the same thing when it comes to music. Mm. So when you, you, you are hearing a note in a context of, for example, when the bass player is playing and when the guitar is out of tune, it makes me scream. <laughs> because, because yeah, there is a difference and there is those little wave, this mm. little conflict between mm. the two string instruments like the bass mm. and the, the, the guitar that is a problem. Mm. But as a player, as a wind instrument player, when you're playing, when you're supposed to be on the top of the line mm. because you are creating the melody and stuff, oh my God, if you, if you hear yourself being a bit too flat or too high, it's impossible, you just can't do that. So you need to fix the problem. It's as well um, a part of your musical education. Please listen to some music, any kind of music, but listen to some music every day. Like, it, it shouldn't have to be blues especially, it can be classic, it can be pop songs, it can be good pop songs. <laughs> <laughs> it can be uh, anything really, but just educate your ear. And, and believe me, it comes so fast uh, if you really care about this. Mm. And with, I mean, you mentioned the four, five, and six. I kind of do a little bit of four, five, six overblow. The one overblow I found really difficult. It, do you have a different approach to that? Is, is that just practice, repetition, you get it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much uh, um, this. Yeah, it's pretty much it. You need to practice a lot because it's not quite exactly the same thing as the other other bands. Mm. Uh, it's um, I don't know if I, if I will be able to get it. Yeah, it might one. not be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one is yeah, not so it doesn't, yeah. yeah, but still, uh, um, the the other blue wants to pop up. Yeah, you yeah. You can hear it. It's on yeah, the edge. Exactly. Of it. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically, uh, the the feeling is 
is not much on the front, it's really mm. much on the back. Mm. And you, you are using the, the, mm. the, the, the heel of the tongue mm. in order to compress the air and then when the, over, when the, the, the harmonica is a bit prepared, the mm. overblow should, should pop up. But, uh, but then again, um, it's just a question of practice. That's mm. all. It's just uh, uh, getting a, a good harmonica, you know, closing mm. a bit the, the reeds, draw and blow, mm. because it's not only the, the blow reed that, that needs to be set mm. up, yeah. Both reads needs to be set up, and then yeah, you, you just practice, and and it's okay. But the thing is, what is difficult is not playing an overblow. Mm. What is difficult is playing an overblow in context. Yeah, you see. probably do better but <laughs> you know this is this is really playing those those notes when you want it mm. uh, that makes the overalls um, interesting because you are just creating all the notes that, that are missing mm. yeah and the overblows which I or the overbends that I would call I suppose uh, redundant so say two so is it right you can you can get two to to overblow but you just get a note that that you could get on a bend. I, I Is don't, that so? I, I, I don't catch that. No. 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 Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what do you mean? I just thought it was possible to get overblows on notes where it's it's kind of pointless in a way. So like. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. On, on two, yeah. three. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so would you ever use them? No. Uh, no. Of course cause, not. Because but... it's easier on a bend, or whatever. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's easier mm. on a bend, but mm. uh, I mean. Mm. Having said that, uh, getting an, another band on, on the whole number two or three, that mm. is not useful. Mm. And by the, by the way, you can mm. get the same note with using mm. a band. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, um, uh, when, you, when you jam, sometimes you are... You, you are using uh, the two Gs. Uh, yeah, two draw um, and three or, blow. Or, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, two, uh, mm. two draw and three blow mm. in order to make some effect and creating so, some, some, something. Mm. So maybe, yeah, I have not done, yet, done yeah. that yet, but yeah. maybe w one day I will, I will find the, the color of, mm. uh, of another blow on, on the whole number three. Interesting. Yeah. And I will be able to, to repeat the same note with some, uh, something else. Or maybe, yeah, it's, uh, it's something yeah. that I can, I can consider to be interesting. Anything, yeah. any weapon that you can use, it's good. <laughs> yeah, well, I wondered that because you're so, um, uh, that you, you kind of know so much about the instrument and, and do so much with it and uh, explore all the possibilities. I thought, oh, maybe you would Not yet. Yeah, use, use one of them for, for, because you prefer it in the context. Yeah, yeah but the, the mm. thing is, um, uh, I am still a young player. Yeah. I am yeah. still a nine years uh, harmonica player, so mm. um, there is still so many things that I have not mm. uh, discovered yet. Uh, but you, you never know. Mm. Uh, you come across, uh, if today, two years ago, uh, someone would have said to me that I would play some Indian music or something mm. like that. I would, I would never uh, say, okay, that, that sounds interesting, but yeah. I am playing that Right now, I'm studying mm. uh, the ragas and, and, and stuff about the, the Indian mm. music, and, mm. and so you know, mm. uh, life is a, uh, um, is always a, a repetition of discovering new things. So maybe one day I will do that. Yes. Who knows what the future holds? Exactly. 